Well, Queens, I can tell you before I press record to this episode, I'm already in love with Pamela. We've only just met. She's my kind of gal. So I'm going to read Pamela's bio, shortened because it was way too long, <laughs> and then introduce her to the podcast. So I have Pamela Madsen with me, and Pamela is a trailblazer in women's wellness, known for her transformational approach to self discovery and intimate connection. Pamela's expertise recognized through her retreats, book and appearances on renowned platforms dismantle social stigmas around female desire. Her work with women helps them create a life where desire intertwines with all areas of existence, becoming a catalyst for holistic well-being and self-discovery and power. Pamela, welcome to the Body Love Binge. I'm so freaking excited for this conversation. It's a really good bio. <laughs> It is, right? You're welcome. You did a really good job shortening that. Um, so I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled to be here. And, you know, I always get a little melty around anyone that does not sound like they're from New York. Yes, I have that British accent. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't even matter who's speaking it. I start to like <laughs> melt and, and swoon. Um, anyway, it, it just lovely. And I'm excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation. What okay. shall we talk about? Well, you don't know this perhaps, but I have 10 quick fire questions before we get into the juice of the episode because I'm fun. Yep. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Favorite food? Favorite food? Anything Asian. Oh, yes. Favorite smell? The armpit of my lover. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Okay, number three. What animal do you most represent and why? A pony. Oh. A pony. Easy. Easy. Why? I love the fierceness. I'm little. And um, I love the fierceness of ponies. You know, that they, they don't know they're little. They just know they're strong. Yes. They're free. And I, I picture them galloping across the highlands. And I, of course, am the lead pony. Of course. I, I, I was going to say like cheetah or leopard or some kind of sexy cat. That could work. I've just always identified with horses and I rode, you know, and that mane and the swishing tail um, and galloping. I love that. Yeah. And this is short questions, but I can't help but add in here. I've rode horses since I was five and I've worked with horses and bred horses and trained horses my entire life. Well, then we need to talk after this podcast. We do, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we <really> do. <laughs> okay. Number four, do you have a favorite quote or mantra that you love? Favorite quote or mantra? You know, be willing. Mm. Yeah. Just be willing. Number five, describe self-love in three words. Self-love is getting the obstacles out of the way to have what I want in my life. Love. That is self-love. Yes. Describe yourself in three words. Hmm. Myself in three words. Resilient. Mm -hmm. Ambitious sexy you just elude is that the right word to use sexuality and essence and just rrrness. <laughs> you know it's a sexy we'll get into it but it's really like living in arousal yes that fuels ambition that fuels success that fuels like all the things that we want right yeah and so um yeah I'll take it yeah I, I would say, you know I love this quote if you want the girl next door, go next door. That is so true. <laughs> Duh. Uh, <laughs> all right, next question. Are we out? There's okay. more. I'm liking this game. Good. I love it too. All right. Favorite part about what you do? Oh, the favorite part about what I do is that I get to transform where the women I work with transform. Mm, yes. Oh, favorite sexual position. Ah, his face between my legs. His face between. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I had to think about that. Like, why? <laughs> what is wrong? 
I'm a well fucked woman. I don't know why I had to just sit and think about that. <laughs> Get it? Okay. Oh, this is really challenging, but I'm sorry I'm going to ask it. Your favorite book? Oh, that is challenging. Um, you know, I, I that changes moment to moment. Mm -hmm. um like for 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 the ladies I love them to read women who love women who run with wolves oh yes you know it's just sort of like a bible of sorts you know and um I I read a lot of Adam Grant like all of his mm -hmm. all of his work um so whatever Adam Grant has out um I think the newest one I read is Give and Take okay I've not heard of that it's good I will add it on my wish list in Audible if it's a listening book. It is. Okay, great. Thank you. And last one, what do you want people to take away from the conversation we're about to have? I want people to understand, um, especially women listeners, mm -hmm. that everything we're talking about is available for them, that you don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be uh, a certain body type. Um, that honestly, I mean, I, I won't talk for you, but I'm really a rather ordinary woman who turned that. on, well, listen, um, who turned on her body. Mm. And it's through the turn on of my body that I became who I am. And that's available to every woman. Let's dive straight in then. Okay. With the first question, because I did take this awesome word out of your bio. Sexological bodywork. Yeah. What, what's that, Pamela? Well, it's it's a relatively new profession. Um, it's been around for 10 or 12, 10 or 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um it's founded by Joseph Kramer, Dr. Joseph Kramer, who also founded lots of other things that people may have heard of, um, especially in the United States. Um, the Body Electric School, he founded that. The term sacred intimacy, you may have heard that term. He founded that. Um, and then he went on um, and founded Sexological Bodywork. It's a terrible name. Like it was, he had like, like, consulted with marketing people or something <laughs> um but it's a profession it's a, it's a certified profession people take one to three year trainings to become certified as what do we just call it a sex bot it's just easier mm -hmm. um a sex bot practitioner and it is a way of offering um sex education um you know we're not allowed to use the word therapy because we're not therapists Right. We're sex educators. And which true, Victoria, is that it's therapy. <laughs> you know, it just is. It's yeah. more than sex education. Yeah. It's transformational. It's um it's a what is it? I'm still talking around it. So yeah. people are certified, it's a profession, it involves touch. We use breath, movement, mm -hmm. voice, and choice, consent, and touch those are some of the tools of the trade it's somatic it's through the body it's not so much about our thinking mind it's more about our reptile um feeling body and um at my you know it it's practiced in lots of different ways um at my retreats we were studied i i'm, I'm pretty sure you're aware of this study and and in the Journal of Sexuality and Human Research. They did a huge study about sexological body work mm -hmm. at an erotic retreat for women. Oh, that would be me. And that study took about six years to complete. Wow. And so what we learn about sexological body work in a retreat setting and with immersion, which is say immersion. So not one-off sessions, women get, five sessions over five days and workshops. So it's really deep. Mm. And the women um, have choice and voice and they're invited to um, get on a massage table and get naked. Mm -hmm. And they're, they are um, matched with a practitioner. I do the matching 
and they receive one way touch. Okay. Now, what, is, what does that mean, Victoria? It means that, you know, if they want to keep their panties on, they can. If they want to wear a suit of armor, they can. It's just harder to actually reach the soma, the body through many, many layers yeah. of actual physical clothes. And then there's the, uh, for lack of a better word, the armor. That oh, women, yes, I know all about the armor. <laughs> that women wear that is invisible, but yeah. actually far stronger. And the women are able to have extensive full body touch, including their genitals. Mm -hmm. And we have all kinds of, they're, they're curious about toys, if they're curious about anything, it's all there. The Most of my practitioners are male. I do have female practitioners that do two things. One, if there's a woman who doesn't want a man. Yes. And two, um, this is a feminine health container. Yeah. So while mostly men are doing the practices with the women, because most of my women are heteronormative or bisexual mm -hmm. and they want man hands and they want to heal their relationship with men. Yeah. Some women are not heterosexual. Some women are um, have too much stuff with men to even begin the healing process. So they may start with a female practitioner. Yeah, that makes sense. And the sessions run from 90 minutes to three hours, depending on what, what retreat these women are going on. Understand that sexological body work is available at other places other than my retreats. Mm -hmm. I am just very opinion, opinionated about this. Yeah. And I believe that it's best done in immersion with a group of women who are having a shared experience mm. in a container that is stewarded by men, but held by women. Yes. Different. Which is very big. So the men keep their clothes on, they wear gloves if they're touching genitals. Everything is customized for that woman. Yeah. So their sessions are private, but so a woman picks them up you know, yeah. call it a retreat center, right? So a woman at the safe port, we call them, escorts her to session and picks her up. Mm -hmm. And then she goes into the big kitten pool. Um, we call it the nest, where women are able to co-regulate mm -hmm. and share their feelings. And it's safe. The number one thing is, is hypervigilance. Women can't have an orgasm. They can't feel their bodies. They can't feel arousal if they're hypervigilant. So the most important thing about sexological body work is to find a container where you feel safe enough to actually let go. Mm -hmm. let and me. you wanted to comment and I spoke over you. I apologize. No, I was, I have so many questions. I'm like biting my tongue. Like I want to ask all these questions. Ask, ask your questions. <laughs> the first question is, is this, what you shared, this beautiful experience, it sounds like a beautiful experience, the di a different or the same as or incorporated with a yoni massage? Yes and no. How so, is it? Different? Well, because people who do yoni massage are are really interested in ladies, lay down, open your legs, and we're going to massage your, your yoni. Yeah. That's the experience. Yeah. Um, we, women and men, but we're talking about women. Mm -hmm. um, we're far more than our than our pussy. You know, erotically, we can be turned on from the tips of our toes to the top of our head. I mean, do you ever have somebody like take their hand and pull your hair? I mean, your yoni is going to wake up to that, right? But you're not actually touching the yoni, right? Yeah. So yeah. we believe in full body touch. So it's not centering the yoni and it's not discluding the yoni mm. so it's a whole body experience and yeah you know at some point in the experience it may get more yoni centered mm -hmm. as women's arousal increases you know what's really important when you're working with women's bodies and you don't want to cause trauma yeah is you don't want to go too fast you don't want it to be too too soon like i'm not ready for that yet yeah you don't want it to be too much. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, too fast, too much, too soon. No. Women need time. Yeah. And so to just go directly to a woman's yoni, um, that's a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And I wouldn't want someone 
um, even a lover, like that's the first place they go. You know, I, I want my body to be seduced. Yes. I want my arousal to rise. I want to have a place to go. If somebody is starting immediately um, with my yoni and is like right on my clit right away, oh. where, do, where, where do I go? So, you know, so many women don't orgasm or don't experience arousal because it's too much, too fast, too soon, and they have nowhere to go. So you want to take our arousal like here, right? And awaken the body. And you want to slowly, slowly, slowly raise it. And so we have a place to rise. Yeah. You start on like a, on a 10. You know, yeah, you can't have an orgasm because there's like no 11. Yeah, get it. So, you know, people have to understand titration mm. and like, really measuring out the intensity and excitement of the touch yeah so yes it includes yoni massage but it's and the same just, just a part of the banquet yes okay so my other question is what type of women come to you i know that's probably such a broad question but it, you know it's an honest question and it's it's surprising. So let's do age. Mm -hmm. So I don't take women younger than 22. I just feel like they need to be more grown up. Yes. Um, and I have had women um, in their 20s come to my retreats. Not usual. Mm -hmm. Most of the women are in their mid-30s, yeah. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Wow. And um, my mom, bless her, she's passed, came at 93. Wow. So it's multi-generational. So you will meet women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s at almost every retreat. Mm -hmm. And that's so delicious because women get the um, experiences of all the different generations. Um, they're usually um, professional women. Mm -hmm. um they're usually women with education um they are independent minded these are not women that ask for permission these are women who ask for support oh i love that you know and they come from all over um they come from all over the world really from um south africa as far away from south africa you know to colorado in the united states my retreats are everywhere so we're in Europe and we're in the United States. Um, we've been to Asia once and South Africa once. So um, these are not women who are, um, you know, necessarily sleeping daisies. Yes, I get that. They, they have some kind of inner drive. They could be, um, now we talk about why. So that's like a demographic, but why do they come? Yes. They come because they're in transition in their life. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe their children are leaving the nest. Um, maybe they've had um, some kind of a medical thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe they've had a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be a reason. Maybe they've had abuse in their history. Mm -hmm. um, and they come because they come. <laughs> it, ha yeah, I know. Um, they come because they want to know more about their bodies. Like nothing's broken. There is no trauma. Um, there isn't anything except that they know they have more in their erotic body than they're expressing. Yeah. So we get a lot of sex educators, like famous sex educators come to me. Why? Because I'm the safest place to go with the most trained practitioners and you know, I've been around for 12 years and we have a steady blah, blah. So we're like very solid. And so we can hold the highest level of sex educator. Someone like me climbs on the tables of my practitioners. I have sessions all the time yeah. because it's what it's like a yoga practice. It's what fuels me. So you don't need to have trauma or medical issues or going through a divorce or whatever it is. You could like want to have fun. Mm. Like you want pleasure. You want more pleasure. Maybe you're bored at home. 
Maybe your libido is in transition. You can't figure it out. Maybe you've never had orgasm. I mean, you don't really understand arousal. And it's like time. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you always have an orgasm, but you think there's more, like 16 in a row, maybe. Um, and not that it's the orgasm Olympics, but it happens. <laughs> so women come for very unique reasons. And I had a woman a few years ago who came with um, childhood trauma. Um, and she spent a couple of years with me coming to retreats. And she said, Pamela, I think I've healed everything, but can I still come? Because, uh-huh. you know, I'm, you know, and I was like, yes, come and play. Like, come and play, come and feel your primal self, come Mm. and have your own contained um, erotic adventures, explore your fantasies in the ways that my practitioners can hold it. We're Mm. not surrogates. Yes. Wow. We're not surrogates. So what does that mean? We don't have sex with our clients. The men keep their clothes on. Like, there's no magic lingam. Mm -hmm. Okay, the the magic sword stays in the pants. <laughs> All right, nobody's asked to, to touch the practitioners, and the practitioners are um, very well trained in how to hold a woman in what's a peak erotic experience when they're reaching out. Yeah, and how to hold them in a way that stays within our boundaries. Okay, yes, and and they're not machines. There's eye contact. There's hugging. There's holding. Um, you know, this is for women. Mm. Women want to feel adored. They want to feel seen and held and cared for. And what I tell women all the time is what you feel from your practitioner is always real. Mm. It's always real because in that sacred container, there's real room for, um, physical and emotional connection yeah wow and and then the door closes and we go to lunch and you and like you said the women come together and then ground yes. them down i think that's really important yes. yeah and then there, there are workshops and other things um and that's all sexological body work yeah so when i'm teaching about the erotic or about around arousal or about power exchange like mm-hmm. all the things that's sexological body work it's not always hands-on and it's it's sometimes like what I'm doing right now with you is an expression of sexological body work. We're having a conversation around sex education and women. Yeah. So, wow. Okay, let's go into the emotional armor piece and also women's relationship to pleasure in general, because I had, not anymore, a fucked up relationship to pleasure. I had to earn pleasure. I wasn't allowed pleasure, all of these things that I've been conditioned to believe. And that played out in my life, sexual abuse, all the things. So can you talk about women's emotional armor and what blocks we have as women that stop us from actually being able to receive pleasure? I think, you know, not for nothing, but pleasure hashtag is a word that we can't even use on Instagram anymore. Really? Really. Mm -hmm. pleasure is banned wow so the fact that women have a hard time receiving pleasure Mm -hmm. shocking i mean it's considered pornography in some way right you know um many years ago my book came out in 2011 um what called oh sure my book is called i am such a terrible promoter my book is called shameless how I ditched the diet, got naked, found true pleasure, and somehow got home in time to cook dinner. Oh my gosh, that is epic. Yeah, and it's my memoir about how I got here. Um, at any rate, where was I? Got, I got, I got off I, my track. You're talking about pleasure, emotion. Why? Yes. So when my book was coming out, and again, this is before Fifty Shades of Grey and before we got a little more open about talking about female pleasure. This is like before the goop thing and before this and that. Yeah. This was still like, ooh, a woman? I mean, you know, um, I mean, my story was a little bit more like, um, good luck to you, Leo Grant, right? I was a married woman, still am. And I was 
in, in my late 30s, 40, and monogamous. And um, I wanted to explore my sexuality more, but I didn't want to cheat on my man. Because back then, you know, when Jesus was a baby, when I was that old, uh, <laughs> I we, that. <laughs> we didn't um, have fancy words like polyamory and ethical yeah. non-monogamy. It was just cheating, right? So why am I telling you this? So I was a woman, I mean, I, I am actually going to answer your question. So I was a woman who really wanted to find my pleasure. And I did. And I wrote a book about it. And this is before I found it back to the body. And CNN, you're familiar with CNN. Yeah. CNN did a um, a special CNN Presents about me and about what I was doing and exploring my body and sexuality and paying for services, right? And they must have committed over $150,000 to filming. They flew people in. They did all the things. Mm -hmm. It never aired. Why? It was supposed to be about what's happening with pleasure around in the United States. And um, a Turner executive at CNN said, no, we're not airing this. Because if this woman can do this, then our wives can do this. Oh, yeah. And so women's pleasure is contained. We're still, even in our freedom, we are commodified. Mm -hmm. We are still being controlled. I mean, all you have to look at is what's going on in the United States right now, where we're trying to roll back the clock. And, you know, these, these you know, men, are voting to take away our reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. Something that I grew up knowing I had, right? And what leads to the need for, you know, abortion or birth control, pleasure, women seeking pleasure. Well, if they can't have access to reproductive choice, mm -hmm. um, does that hold you back from, is that just another message that pleasure is wrong? Is it another message when, um, I use this story a lot, my best friend has three daughters and um, liberal, like she lost her virginity way before me. Like we were, you know, we were just like, it was there, it was, sex was available. Our mothers took us for birth control. Um, and her, her eldest daughter was like 18 and wanted to bring her boyfriend over to sleep over. And my girlfriend's reaction was, oh my God, what will the neighbors think? And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me that you let your daughters be vegan and graze outside and eat the grass and go to ballet school as a career and you know become whatever it is in the world, but you actually don't trust your girls with their vaginas. Yeah. Like you trust them in every aspect of your life, dear girlfriends, but you don't trust them around their ability to have pleasure in their lives and their ability to own their own, um, their own yoni. Mm. And she was like, oh my God, Pamela, you're right. My daughters will love you. And her daughter was able to have her sleepover. So there is so much out in the culture that tells us that we can't be trusted with our own pleasure, mm. right? Um, so much is condemned around a woman's pleasure. There are parts of this world where a woman is raped and she's the one killed. Yeah. So to say that it's a personal thing, like what's wrong with me and my relationship with pleasure? Well, darling, you are surrounded on all sides with negative messages about women owning their pleasure. Because what is true is that when women do own their pleasure, we become, we do become queens. We do become the most powerful aspect of ourselves. Can I continue? Please do. Yes. And that does okay. involve <laughs> that does involve us getting out of our thinking judgment brain. Yeah. And actually feeling our bodies and giving ourselves permission to receive pleasure, which goes back to hypervigilance. Yes. Which goes back to safety. Yes. So yes. 
creating a space. So when I'm working with a woman, Victoria, what I would say to a woman right now, can you want to play with me? I would say to a woman, the beginning of every every workshop, every everything, every session, where are you now? Like, look around. Where are you? Like, do you see the windows? Do you see the door? Like, if you had to leave, do you know where the door is? Do you know where the windows are? Do you feel safe in this room? Mm. Does it feel private enough for you? And so checking in first with a woman's hypervigilance, do you feel safe where you are? Mm. That is the number one key. Yes. A woman being able to receive pleasure. If you are busy worrying about anything, your physical safety, what somebody is thinking about your body. That's a big one for my audience. So I'd love you to dive into that. Okay. So what people are thinking about your body, um, judgment, your own judgment, your own self-hatred. It's very hard to receive pleasure. We just did the most fantastic exercise. Um, I called the three blind mice. And what we did, this is at an advanced mastery. So these women have been with me and they've done a bunch of retreats. Um, I had the practitioners, we were in a big yoga room and I lined up the practitioners and I put blindfolds on. They take away the nail gaze, take it away. I had two tables and then I had two women come up blindfolded. They didn't know who their practitioners were. The practitioners didn't know who the women were. I mean, they did once they started to touch them. Yes. And then we spotted, me and another um, assistant spotted the table. So make sure nobody was going to fall off. Um, it was an incredible experience because the eyes were gone. The male gaze was gone. And women felt so free. Yeah. So free. And they really were able to practice attunement with the practitioners and how they actually moved together. Like it, it felt to me like I was an amoeba, mm. you know, with other amoebas. And to be able to just feel so free in our bodies. And so sometimes um, that was an advanced practice, but putting on a blindfold. For, the, for your lover, so would you recommend, so a woman who is struggling with her body image, even if she's got a really loving, caring partner who adores her body and she just doesn't, would you recommend the partner put on the blindfold to please her to start with? Well, it, it could be a game. Yes. So the game is, I want you to touch and read my body like a blind man would read a book of Braille. Oh, yes. That's yep. an invitation. Yeah, an invitation, yes. Right, so it's not about, like, I I feel really bad about my body and I don't want you to see it. Yeah. Okay, because that's not sexy, right? Yeah. Um, I'll give you another story about, you know, so, ladies. Flesh is sexy. Mm. Flesh feels really good in hands. Mm -hmm. So I do these live demos for the women. And I'm not thin, I'm curvy. In other words, I'm fat, okay? So I have fat on my body. Um, and um, I'm doing a demo and afterwards the women are talking and this gal says to me, I was wish with you the whole time, Pamela, until you got an all fours on the table. I could never do that. I said, well, why couldn't you do that? You do everything. And she was like, because like your breasts were hanging and your belly was hanging. And how could I let my husband see that? Mm -hmm. She was built like me. And I was like, okay. <coughs> Come around. Girls, line up. And I said, all right. Grab my belly. Grab my butt. Tell me what that feels like for you. Mm. And one by one, they came around and they like really grabbed my belly fat and they grabbed my butt. And they were like, oh my God, this is so sexy. This feels so good. I've been depriving my partner all this time of this pleasure of my body. 
because mm -hmm. I had body shame. Yeah. And so she went off to her session and then she came back and she was like, I did it. Yay. And I got on all fours and I did all these things and it felt so good to have my belly grabbed and to have my butt grabbed and to have them play with my flesh. And there was so much pleasure mm -hmm. there for me. And so, you know, all the bodies are sexies you know, hard bodies and bony bodies and chubby bodies and obese bodies. They all have pleasure potential in them. And there is pleasure, not just for you and your body, there's pleasure for the toucher. Mm. There's pleasure for the toucher. And so when we hide our bodies, we are depriving not just ourselves of that pleasure, but our part. Um, they're with you for a reason yes and them seeing you in pleasure there's nothing sexier that they're so I've been told and you know the women I work with than let's say um man and woman than a man seeing his queen in pleasure from him regardless of whether she has a fucking flat stomach or not right. he does not care which true is embodiment is the new black Oh, yes. Embodiment being, I think the word allowing is really key, isn't it? Allowing ourselves to be and receive the pleasure of the touch. And the male gaze was interesting to me because I used to be very fearful of that because I've been judged my entire life and looked at and sexualized as many women have. And the thing that really healed myself around that was going to a naked spa in the Netherlands, as you know, because you were there recently. Everyone wants to go to naked the only spas available are naked. And so when I first went there, it was a really uncomfortable experience to begin with. But then I understood that, oh my God, bodies don't have to be sexualized all the time. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? You know, there is something, when a woman finally comes to this place of understanding the power of her own eroticism, mm. um, she, I mean, she's just sexy. Yes. A woman empowered in herself is sexy. And that can be any size. Mm -hmm. That can be any disability. Um, a woman who is feeling hot within herself is hot for the world around her. Mm -hmm. And and that radiates. It just radiates. I mean, you said that it, that my erotic essence radiated to you. Yes. Now, I think I'm throwing it at you. It's just who I am because yeah. I'm embodied and yeah. I'm confident about that. And it doesn't mean that I don't ever have feelings of, oh, look at that belly. It, after, even though I'm telling you how great my belly is and the pleasure I get from it, doesn't mean I don't ever have moments of going, hmm, what about that bulge? Or, hmm, what about this? Or what about that? We're fucking human. Yes. We judge ourselves. So judge it, go ahead, judge it and then put it down. And you transmute that. It sounds like you you accept yourself where you're at. You don't hide it. You don't push it away. You see it, you accept it. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm still sexy. Cause right, I carry to on. <laughs> yeah, let's continue yeah. because I'm yeah. worthy of pressure. Yeah, and that energy yeah. attracts. You know, it's like honey for bees. And so if you're able to, you know, look, all these things are process. Like we, we, we are born into this culture that we talked about earlier. We don't have to go through it again. We're born into this very particular culture and we need to do our own recovery. Yes. And so we have to reboot we need to recover. We need to build a freaking team. I have people that support me. I'm a leading sex educator, um, you know, very well known around the world. And I have mentors. Me too. I have, I have teachers. I climb on the table and I get sexual, this sexological body worker, make sure before each retreat that I am fed. Yes. That my well is full so yeah. I can then give from that place. Mm. This is 
forever. And this takes time. And, you know, everybody can have this, Victoria. What's, what's true is that most people aren't willing to put in the time, the effort, the practice. Mm -hmm. We'd rather take a pill. We'd rather take an injection. You know, I think the part of the reason, I don't know how you feel about psychedelics. I'm not against psychedelics. And I, and maybe you have a big psychedelic practice. I don't know. Because... I actually don't. Not, not yet. It might okay. be coming, but not yet. <laughs> okay. So people are like reaching for the mushroom. Mm -hmm. And okay, cool. And what's also true is the mushrooms inside of you. Mm. And I truly, truly believe that. There's a great um, article on my blog at backtothebody.org that people can read that's called psychedelic sex without psychedelics. Mm. And everybody can, can um, all women have the capacity to experience altered trance states, downloads, all the mystical woo-woo stuff through their yoni, through their arousal. Mm. The problem is in regular heterosexual sex, arousal for a woman may last five or 10 minutes if, if she's lucky because mm. men are pushing. Yeah. Because for them, it's about penetrative sex or, or a blowjob or whatever it is. And they feel a woman's wetness. They see that it's a sign that they can enter. Yeah, and it's not ready yet. And it's not. So wetness is a sign of our arousal. Mm. And so most women have not truly experienced the magic of arousal. Mm. I love to keep women in arousal for 90 minutes. When women are in arousal for 90 minutes, when they're in sexual pleasure and they're just peaking and they're floating, that's when the magic happens. That's when we get altered states. That's when you can actually have for lack of a better word, psychedelic or witchy experiences, colors, downloads, messages, whatever. It happens for women in sexological body work. It can happen to them in real in in other situations. Um, but they need to be given the time. Yes. And they need to be out of their head. Which means they can't be giving back. Yeah, just fully receiving. Fully receiving. So see it as like a um if you were to have a sherpa or a guide take you on a journey mm. the way you would if you were taking psychedelics only now you're doing this through activating your body yeah and, and you need all... a partner to well obviously come to your retreats or have a partner it doesn't have to be your partner partner but have a partner that you trust right, right. to do this work together exactly get a massage table yeah you can need a table i don't believe in doing this on the bed it gets confusing you want like your own like altar space yeah where that is what is happening here mm. and the hardest thing for women is not to get back yeah that's so true. what cracks open our armor is the ability to receive mm -hmm. and to really let go and so tools are perhaps to start this with a practitioner yes someone who you don't pay the bills with yeah someone who you're not parenting with someone who doesn't leave the dishes in the sink like you don't have to know about their stuff yeah they're there for the single purpose of supporting you to open to your own vulnerability to your own pleasure to your own feelings and understanding your body mm -hmm. and then if you want sure take this back to your partner but, you know, I don't run a company called Back to Your Partner. I run a, a company called Back to Your Body. <laughs> and so, you know, that's what I do. And then what you do with it, great. I mean, we do a couples retreat once a year, but it's not our focus. Mm. And that's only for women who go through our program whose partners say, great. You know, I sent you a little Fiat. You sent me home a Maserati and I didn't get an <laughs> owner's manual. <laughs> yes. and so we do a couple's retreat once a year for the couples to come together for the men to learn some of these skills but there are places for men to go to learn these skills is it the same as tantra tantra yes and okay yeah. yes i know you know um tantra 
unfortunately has become very um, overused mm -hmm. to mean so many different things that I can't even answer that question anymore. Yeah. Sometimes Tantra is used as a as a sacred way to have a sex party. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a pathway to get in the door. Of an orgy. Right. We'll do a puja circle, stare in each other's eyes, and then we're gonna like find someone and and and, and you know, be wild in the corner. Yay, go have fun. Mm -hmm. Um and Tantra actually is a deeply mystical experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that most of the practices like sexological body work are built on the foundations of that. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's, you know, I, I, it's hard for me when people throw the word Tantra in, cause I don't know what it will, what Tantra. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what do you, what, what does that word mean to you is usually the first question I ask, you know, they say, is this Tantra? Well, what is Tantra to you? Yeah, then you can answer and, the question a bit. And better. then I can answer the question, but otherwise it's like, you know, we, even when we talk about the word pleasure, mm. like what is pleasure to you? Mm. You know, for me, pleasure is yearning. Ooh. Pleasure is anticipation. Yes. As I'm saying that, my pussy, my pussy, my yoni got a little hot. He's like, um, Hi. Get, <laughs> like, you know, I don't want it too easy. Yeah. Same. And, you know, I have a, a person in my life and um, we had a split and we're, we're together and split it together. I don't know what we are, but I, I said to him, um, you know, I need at least like these three things in my life. And and then flowers came and it was one of the things I asked for. And then something else happened and then something else happened. And I went, oh my God, he's given me all the things I've asked for. Shoot. Now what? <laughs> what am I going to yearn for? Interesting. Think, he's giving me what I want. Like, yay. Let's celebrate that. And I'm in a pickle now. Yes. I have to like figure out what do I want next and like what's going to make me yearn and reach for you know I don't love it just put in a plate in front of me sometimes but I want to like I want to feel like I'm calling it in that I'm working a bit for it yeah you know I'm I'm that person that wants to treat at the end of the race yeah and I want to go again yeah we well, all have our things Pamela, what would the world be like if every single woman was turned on and connected to their innate sexual power? <laughs> the guys won't, this, this is what's true. The guys don't stand a chance. And that's why yeah. we are controlled and tamped down. Yeah. Um, in, in the United States, there's something like 450 um laws on the books around female pleasure reproduction and all that there's not one for men not one for men oh but lots God. of laws around women and what women could do with their bodies and all of that nothing for men so the patriarchy has a vested interest in controlling women from being in pleasure embodied and autonomous yeah because then we turn into leaders Yes. And then we take back the power and the world becomes a more beautiful place. It becomes less violent. It becomes more focused on the needs mm -hmm. of humans on our planet, as opposed to just about power and money and getting and taking and controlling. And what's also true, and I have to say it because it's hard, women can be a part of the patriarchy yes and women get enrolled in it and they don't even know they are and they enforce mm -hmm. with female voices yeah the patriarchy and there's a lot of healing that has to happen there but when you feel another woman's judgment about how you present in the world mm -hmm about you know your opinions about how you dress around how you express 
yourself and how you walk through the world. If a woman is judging you, she's judging you through the lens of the patriarchy. Yes. I was getting emotional. I don't know if you saw when you were speaking to, yeah. uh, speaking to women, not just being in their power and giving so much love and healing and the world. And for some reason, it's just made me so emotional because that's what I stand for. Women understanding who they really are, which is infinite love. And well, what, a, what a beautiful guide you are. Thank you. And how lucky your women are to have found you. Thank and you. and how generous you are in exposing the women who tune in to you and who work with you um, to other female leaders who offer different kinds of aspects to what you offer. So that's not patriarchy. That's a feminine leadership. Yes. The feminine leadership is expansive. It's not about the tall, you know, the tallest poppy. Mm. And it's about how do we work together as a collective to heal the feminine and the masculine? Yes. Because as women, we need the masculine. We, we yeah. want to raise, you know, we have children, we want to raise good sons. We love men. We love the masculine. Yes. Thank <laughs> God for the masculine. Exactly. You know, and so when women are in their power, they're able to actually hold men too. Yes. And relax enough for men to hold us. Mm. Because we know that we're not going to be taken from. Yeah. Wow. It, it's a it's a big deal, right? It's a huge deal. And I just have this beautiful vision of a different world, which will happen eventually, of the women, the masculine and the feminine rising together. It's not about one overruling the other, is it? It's about rising together. And there was a reason why, however many years ago, the pussy was worshipped completely worshipped and then of course sex now is everywhere but we're not allowed to speak about it but men can watch porn and women can watch porn but no one can speak about it yet sex rules the fucking world <laughs> and it's censored and it's censored and, and we can't say pleasure or libido or desire wow um, those are all key words that are centered on on um, and so you have people um having to write the word write these words um, in misspellings yeah so, so yeah. they don't get censored that is otherwise they don't get you know and and you know losing your instagram or your facebook or whatever platform you are and if you are someone in our fields is like being fired yes it's very traumatic and it's frightening so every time i post a picture i take a deep breath mm -hmm. and every time i write i take a deep breath because i don't know if uh, there's just so many colleagues that have lost their accounts mm -hmm. and you know and, and no one's writing anything that is salacious but a playboy never gets censored yeah yeah because it's around the male lens that's so true my are you okay for a couple of minutes by the way because we're on the hour but i want to oh, be sure. Sure, sure, sure. Good time. my um husband is a he writes for um fhm magazine I don't, have you got fhm in America I don't know it's basically a typical man's magazine with women and all that and unfortunately the articles that he writes for the magazine the ones that get read the most are the articles with a pretty half-naked woman on the on the front of the article because sex right. sells. yes it does because it's it's a it's a primal need yeah that that people have and and yet we keep trying to control it and we try to control it more than we try to control hate or yeah. racism yeah um and you know we'll just keep doing our thing victoria and really? we'll heal the world the one yoni at a time heaven and, yes that. and that's all we need to do and there's so many ways ladies for you to find your healing and it's not one person it's not one thing it's building a team mm -hmm. and so if you're working with victoria you know what would you add to that not lose Victoria, but when you add to that, if you're working with me, I would be hooking you up with a coach like Victoria or a psychotherapist, or maybe you need a, another kind of, of training. You know, we have to be able um, to be in feminine leadership. Again, it's tribal. It's yeah. not a person on top. We need teams. I'll say it again. Ladies, you don't need permission, you need support. And you need to be able, and I'm going to say these big words like should and need, and you can hate me later, 
Um, to move your obstacle means that you may have to disappoint somebody. You I'm may not, okay. you, you may not be at a birthday party. You may not be at a holiday dinner. You may miss a big weekend. You may have to put a work thing aside mm -hmm. to make the time for you mm -hmm. so that you can do your work so you can be better in all the worlds. And that's the hardest thing for women to do. Yeah. It's to actually acknowledge that the family dinner will go on without them and that they will figure out how to get, cook the turkey or whatever the heck it is and that they can do an intensive with you. They can go on a retreat with me. They can go on their own eat, pray, love adventure. Yes. And the world will go on. And their world will be a whole lot better. Snaps, snaps, snaps. What a great way to end. What a great way to end. I would like you to share one thing, if that's if you've got time. Sure. If you could share one thing that women listening could do today to bring them back into their pleasure. I know everyone's different, but what's one thing you'd recommend to start this journey? Talk to other women. Mm -hmm. You know, get into a women's group. Yes. Get into a, a, a sexuality driven women's circle. Um, you may run them. I run them. Um, there, there, there are women's circles. Um, there's also um, something I developed called the Lotus Lift Meditation. And we don't have time for me to run through it, but it's free on my website. You sign up, you'll get it. It's, or click on the Oprah article. It was featured in Oprah. And it's a, it's a self-pleasure meditation mm -hmm. um, where women, um, you could do it through your pants, where women... Um, do a guided arousal meditation, which really connects them hard and fast back to your body. Um, you know what? You want to be connected to your pleasure. Move an obstacle today. Don't pick. I'm not going to tell you the thing. Do two things. Find an obstacle, and I mean low-lying fruit. Okay, like a, a ripe peachy obstacle get rid of it it's a letter a phone call a whatever it is in your life get rid of the freaking obstacle and i'm not telling you to, to climb mount fuji okay get rid of the thing that's been holding you back that's low-lying fruit it's ready and then choose a desire again low-lying fruit something you've been wanting that you haven't given to yourself it could be a simple as going to that bakery and letting yourself eat that freaking cupcake with a cup of coffee. Yes. Go get that cupcake, girl. And enjoy it. And enjoy it. So whatever it is for you, the obstacle and the pleasure, low yes. life fruit, after we end this podcast and you've listened to it, write it down and then do it. Yes. Actions speak louder than words. So I gave you two answers. Thank you, Pamela. How can people work with you? Because I know you do retreats and you have your book, but do you do yeah. coaching? Well, do I do um coaching? I do mentorship. Okay, mentorship. I, I mentor I mentor women who are um, you know, wanting one on one support. I only take like four a year, women who are maybe transitioning into the field. Um, we run various forms of retreats around the around the world, European listeners. We have an upcoming retreat next year in Puglia. Um, in Italy, we come to Europe. Europe. Lots of UK women come to me in the US as well, or they like to take the European retreats. Um, we're really about the body. Yeah. So if, if you are interested in getting back to your body and getting learning around that, go to my website, take the pleasure quiz. Mm -hmm. There's a free pleasure quiz at backtothebody.org. Take the quiz. Oh, I'm going to take a quiz. And then you will get nurturing emails that will support you into perhaps where you want to go. And of yeah. course, you know what we say, follow me on Instagram um, at the Pamela Madsen or on Facebook where my writing is longer. We have tons of free content. Thank and you. so eat it. It's free. It's, it's nutritious. And, you know, maybe it will serve you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you so much for your wisdom, your sensuality. I'm doing all sorts of like, I've got one leg spread wide open on the sofa that no one can see right now. 
I love it. I love it. Maybe I'll see you in Puglia. You never know. Oh my gosh. I'm going to do that quiz and I'm going to be on your email list because this is the next step for me in my evolution in terms of coming back to the body from my eating disorder recovery and self-love. And this is just the natural next step. So thank you for my, being my pleasure. Here. My and pleasure. Thank you. And listeners, if you have any questions, message Pamela. And thank you again, Pamela, for being on. So much love to you.